Welcome to Esports Connected. I'm your host, Megan Van Petten. And today, Brandon Brunheimer from AVI SPL is co hosting with me. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Hey, thanks for having me. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a good time. It is. We are so excited. Nick Turner from NT Esports and Queen Mary's College. This is very exciting that you've joined us all the way from the UK. Um, welcome to the show, Nick. Thanks very much for having me. Looking forward to it. So um, tell us how you heard about the Esports Trade Association. Okay, so I consume as much esports as I can in terms of anything on the telly, videos, internet, audio books, and I was just looking for something different. So I went for, um, I was looking for a podcast, a new podcast, looked through a few and thought, oh, don't like the look of that, no, and then I stumbled across the uh, the Esther podcast, so I popped that on, um, and that turned into driving home every evening listening for about three weeks to do catch up um and that was it really I was I, I, the podcast was so kind of varied and interesting that I I thought right okay the podcast is great but who are these people um so I've kind of gone standard onto LinkedIn managed to find you Megan um and then stalked you for a little bit um and then we had a conversation and you know it kind of went from there that's such a great story. Um, it really is. And um, it's so awesome that somebody like what Brandon might call you, what, what would you say? Is he the mayor of esports? That, that would be a good, you know, or the governing body in UK, or, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of titles that he could have based in, in the UK on, on esports, but uh, the, the godfather of, of content with that. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I like that too. Yeah, Brandon, you went over there to see uh, Nick. Yeah, I did. I had the uh, the luxury and the opportunity to be able to to go out to Queens Mary and see the facility and see what what accomplishments they've they've put forward and and what they've been able to to build out there. And it's pretty pretty incredible what they've been able to build and and what they're able to continue to build and what the plans are for the future. And we had a, a brief discussion about that and just really getting the opportunity to see the facility was was pretty awesome what Nick's doing there. Yeah, it was great to have you Brandon. It, it, it was a privilege kind of although I was watching you the night before bearing in mind you were due here at about two o'clock in the afternoon and it was kind of six o'clock in the evening in the UK <laughs> and I'm looking again that looks like Brandon's bedroom from the education committee meetings. Yep. Uh, are you still coming? Yep I'll be there. I'll be there on the flight and straight off the flight and straight to see her so yeah, um, so I flew flew overnight, and uh, I, I got there first thing in the morning. Hit some meetings in the morning, and then reached out and said, "Hey, I'll be be there around three o'clock UK time." He's like, "You were literally in Florida yesterday." I said, "Yep, <laughs> that's how we roll." Yeah, it was a very good effort. And then when you left us, you were straight off somewhere else as well. Yeah, if I'd known, yeah. I would have booked a helicopter. <laughs> You know, I asked Brandon once where he changes his outfits, you know, it, there's because there's no phone booth. So it's like, where do you go? Right. He's just everywhere. And it's so it's we're so lucky that you, um, you know, because, you know, just getting back to the show, we really do simply want to connect with our members, our community and learn what everybody's up to. And I think that's why people like the show and listen, but it's more than that. We're a whole community. We meet once a year at our big show in Chicago. And, you know, Brandon is the chairman of the education committee and so committed to visiting, you know, certain shows in the industry, as many as he possibly can, and then making site visits like this, you know, to Queen Mary's. I mean, tell us a little bit about Nick, like what's going on. And I know Mark Henderson has been a huge supporter and you have that fancy corner office there at the college. So uh, maybe the other professors can understand why you have the corner office. Yeah, I, th I think the having having my own office situation is the highlight, is the pinnacle of, uh, of my education career, because uh, I'm very fortunate here at QMC to, to be in that position but somebody has to look after the esports esports facility that's how I've sold the dream um, and I've still got my office so so that's all good so I mean yeah we've got we've got lots of things happening here at, at the college um, we when we set up our facility which has got two arenas a streaming room like a cafe area a yoga and pilates room 
Um, you and know, you did got... hear him correct. Yes, there is a yoga and Pilates studio there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Brandon, did you know, did you know that the whole floor of, was empty and he took one room and filled a whole wall with post-its to create his vision? That's awesome. I want to see that photo. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, and I found it the other day. So, so previously before joining QMC, um, or I, I was still working part-time actually when I first came here, we, I was working for an esports company that, that basically said, you know, we've got, we've got all of this stuff. We've got, you know, a, a great platform, but we want to put something back in and we want to, we want to do some kind of like academy stuff, but particularly we want to focus on um, special educational needs um, and uh, plus other stuff. So, we started looking and I went in there on day one and I said, right, what do you want me to do? I don't know. That's what I've employed you for, Nick. So I said, OK, I'm going upstairs. So I just disappeared. Everything was downstairs. So I went upstairs in what was the kitchen, but hardly ever used with rolls of brown paper, packs of post-it notes, marker pens, started just pinning on the wall how I saw things going, reached a point, went downstairs. OK, guys. You tell me what you want. What would you do if you were going to do a course? If you were going to set something up, what would what you do? You work here. You've been here longer than me. So everybody started chipping in with sort of different things. So they all went into the into the pot. Um, and then it's slowly. And, and that took me probably. What about four or five days to come up with something that to me looked visually like an academy. Um, but you're starting from scratch. You know, you're you're, you're, you're going from base to something um you know and over time we kind of built it all out and i'd almost forgotten what was on the wall because you don't go up there you don't see it and it was actually when we we relocated and moved to to, a, to an amazing place um and i had to tidy it away and i've kind of gone up there and looked at it and just spent about half an hour just looking at the wall almost ticking off then the post did that yeah we did that we achieved that we did this mm. and by the time you've done that for half an hour a it's so therapeutic but the the, the kind of like the reward the, the award and the, that kind of achievement of as a team because you could you can't you know I didn't do this on my own I, I I just kind of set up this structure and then we worked together to build it um but the fact that we built almost exactly what was on the wall was a real kind of oh do you know what like this is a good day. We can go to the new place. And like when I started 18 months ago, we've achieved what, what I was brought in to do. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was really good. And, and again, when I was uh, moving stuff, I, I got a new computer and I was shifting files and I found the photos of when I set it all up. And again, I sort of spent another 10 minutes just looking at it going, yes, we did this. We did this. So now, did you ever think, like that that post and note uh endeavor would create a, a network of conjoining you with 200 different universities and schools to be able to kind of create that curriculum for the uk yeah i mean it's really interesting that, that you say that because previously uh, when i was head of department at, at a college university um we i'd introduced games into the curriculum which doubled our uh, student numbers, which everyone was very pleased with, uh, as you can imagine. But I'd already started to speak to um, Overworld, the esports company, um, about a, a range of different things. And I went in there and that really was my introduction to it. And the eye opener, they're like, whoa, there's this whole new thing going on or this thing going on that I wasn't particularly aware of. So I originally joined them on their advisory panel just to kind of talk them through ideas and things that we could potentially uh, potentially do and work on. And then it was only some, I don't know, probably two or three years later that I, I had that eureka moment of, right, okay, there is a place for me right now in this industry, which is the cross between esports and education and everything in between. Um, and the minute you know I'm one of those people the minute you have that kind of vision or that focus I'm quite a determined chap and it's sort of like right okay so how do we how am I going to position myself here and we're going to do this um and through again through that network I was actually consulted on by uh my colleague uh James 
who is at QMC here as the director of esports, and he came to Overworld to ask me about the building of the facility here. He then discovered that I was former head of department, essentially his job at a different place. And again, that was, hang on, we need to know each other here. So we've kind of decided, or I told him, look, if you get this facility built, because I'm going to be honest, I didn't think it would happen. I thought, no, this is way too ambitious. Um, if you get this built, you do realise I am going to have to come and work for you. Um, and that was that, as they say, you know, they, they, they had it built. I started to work for them and then I've come over here. And then since then, everything has really kind of, um, uh, you know, exploded because we were so far ahead of the game here in the UK. It's given us that opportunity to stay ahead of the game. And that's something that we're really focused on is that we can't sit back and say, look at this facility that we've got. Look how we've suddenly got over 200 esports students here. You know, this is amazing. But everybody else is catching up on, and some are already have, a, you know, facilities like ours, which is great. Um, but we're that step ahead. So we're pushing boundaries in other ways and looking at new things. Um, and I think at times there are other institutions in the UK that get slightly annoyed if they see the news report or they see the, the headlines like QMC have done this, QMC have done that. Um, because they're suddenly going, oh, I thought we'd caught up. Now they're a whole new, you know, they're next level again. Um, and that's the way, that's the plan. You know, that's what it, that's what we're trying to achieve just to keep, to keep ahead of the game. Yeah, it's so if, funny when, when I was there and in other meetings outside um, talking to individuals about how I went to Basingstoke and stuff like that. And, and the, the big question was, why'd you go there? Mm -hmm. And it, when I started to explain what, why I went there, um, the realizations started to pop in because these are individuals who aren't involved in esports. They're like, we have that kind of program there. I said, yeah, of all places. And it's, I had the opportunity to meet James as well. And it, it, they really do have a, a fantastic vision for what they're wanting to do and how they're wanting to expand. Um, and, and, and most of all, you know, I got to, to meet some of the students there and, and not necessarily interact very much with them, but the, seeing them in the environment, they truly are engaged with the environment, want to be there. And it just shows the passion for education there and the willingness to want to play there. I think that that's incredibly important. Yeah, I mean, we've got students who travel a considerable distance to be here. I've got one student who, or two students who, I wouldn't commute for my job as far as they travel. And these are 16 year olds that get on the train at 6.30 or 6.15 to arrive at college for a nine o'clock start. And they are here every single morning. You know, they, they're not in college on a Friday, but they're here Monday to Thursday. Um, I interviewed when we enrolled them, you know, I kind of looked at mum and said, uh, it's quite a trek to get in. I said, no, we've sorted it all out. And we're now kind of, you know, nine months in and they're here every day, um, you know, and those students have actually created their own esports team, control esports that have already won a couple of tournaments because they have that desire, that drive, the passion of esports and what the education side is showing them is that there is more to esports than just being that pro player, you know, being a, a player in the team. You know, they've kind of they're suddenly realizing this bigger picture of of wow look at all these jobs look at all these things you know we took them up to the bet uh 2022 global show in london which is the biggest education tech show in london uh in in the uk sorry and they couldn't believe what they were seeing in terms of everything that was there because they see qmc and mm. they see qmc as this amazing place and then they see other stuff um, you know, that's directly related to esports because we had an esports stand there for the first time ever. Um, so that, that kind of wider understanding of, of the industry, the jobs that are available to them, um, the different pathways, and that they don't have to be really good gamers. And they do happen to be really good gamers, but their team um, isn't about them. They have no plans to play in their team. They want to run the organization and and recruit the players um you know which is a, for a, for a 16 for 16 17 year olds that's a phenomenal kind of level of responsibility 
and, and, and kind of seeing that picture of like, it's not about me as the star player, because I think I can find players that are better than me, but those better players are going to perform in tournaments and events. And that's what, that's what I want to do. So yeah, you know, we've, we've definitely created a facility that um, encourages people and parents, you know, the parents are, um, when they come for open evenings and, and I think Brandon, when you, when you popped in, we were just an hour Prepping away for from, it, yeah. yeah, we were just about to open up and, you know, that evening it was, we had hundreds and hundreds of parents and very few of them were negative. Five years ago, when I started, uh, or started, set up the Academy at Overworld, nearly all the parents were very sceptical um but i think hopefully people are now starting to see the value and the, the careers uh within esports so all of a sudden it's okay it's okay to do esports as as a qualification you know there is a purpose behind it it's not just those stinky teenagers sitting in the dark playing video games drinking red bull all night you know it's well it still is that it still is that yeah <laughs> um but that's part of our job you know we have yeah. to teach them we have to educate them that that's not okay. You know, yeah. it's not okay to, to finish college and then spend all night gaming and come in in the morning, not in a fit state to study because, you know, they've been grinding till four in the morning. Um, and slowly but surely, I think we're getting there. We, yeah. have, we, have, we have more issues in other courses like media than we do in esports for students coming in without any sleep because they've been gaming all night. Because the esports students have learned this isn't the this isn't the, the best the best thing to do, which is amazing. Yeah. It's um it's so exciting to hear that you're in this sort of role teaching students really about passion and really having a passion um for what you do in life. If that would be you know one thing you know that I would want my legacy to be would be you know do what you love. And it will all work out in collaboration with people and start with one post-it and bring people to your wall and look and listen and read and move it around. And, and you know what the most important thing is play, yeah. play with it, you know, play post-it, get out the crayons, get out the markers, get out the pencils, take a photo um, and build together in community to make, to make the place better one person at a time. And boy, Nick, what um, what is this whole big um, opportunity and build done for you? And, and what are you doing in consulting now? Yeah, so um, again, I think historically, although I still am a journalist, but I always say previously, but you never don't stop being a journalist. Um, you know, I enjoy writing and with the, the, the awarding body for the BTEC over here, Pearsons, um, you know, I kind of work with them on various different things and I've had dealings with them. And I went and spoke for them on, on stage at the, at the Bet Show uh, to talk about the delivery of the, of the qualification. Um, you know, and I started, I offered, said, would you, would you want me to write a blog? You know, I can do it as a, as a series of, because there was lots of factual information coming out about this is the BTEC, this is how it can be done. And I said, well, why don't we, why don't I write a piece, you know, a regular piece whereby I talk about like a year in the life of an esports teacher. So that the teachers, the new teachers, because we're already delivering the qualification, but there are, you know, the, come September, there's going to be close to 200 colleges delivering it. And at the moment, it's probably, I can't remember exactly, but it's probably closer to like 30 or 40 because they are, we were the early adopters and then everyone else is, is, is getting on board for September. But there will be loads of teachers out there who will be thinking, oh, I've got to teach esports. I don't know anything about esports. I don't even know what esports is. I can't find a qualified teacher who knows about esports, mainly because they don't really exist at the moment. Um, so I can give them the opportunity to, give, to, to look at it from a, a real perspective, from the perspective of, look, don't worry, it's going to be okay. I'll talk you through various bits and bobs that, because, you know, I'm delivering it full time to the full time course for the first time this year. So I'm learning as I go, you know, I'm an experienced teacher. However, there are things that I've learned along the way and think that really didn't work. Um, and, 
that hasn't worked and I need to do that. But I, I put it all in the blog so that to, to, to try to help others avoid the mistakes that I've made. Um, but at the same time, just trying to kind of highlight the fact that any college in the UK can deliver this qualification without an official esports teacher, you know, across media, business, finance, um, sport, computing, games design, you know, th that team that every college will already have is enough to deliver the qualification. Um, and so I kind of just started to highlight some of the pitfalls, some of the things that caught me out, some of the things that I, some of the positive things that I learned, you know, just the first one about engagement and the fact that when they rock in through the door, they are ready to go and they want to be there, um, which is uh, rare from 15 years teaching other subjects. Um, so that was, you know, that's a real positive. And, but also things like getting them to stop thinking about gaming and get them to start thinking about esports. When they come in, they know about the games. They know all about gaming. That's their thing. My original plan, I changed on day one because I could tell from the first session that that is not going to work. So I'm just going to completely flip that. I'm scrapping that. Went home that evening and, and made up a three-week schedule of other things for them to do purely to get them to switch that mindset from gaming to esports but using gaming is the vehicle to do that so you know i'll create a video quiz where they could had to identify all these short clips name the game name the game which they loved you know sort of like it was the most competitive thing that they could possibly do um but then we use the list that we created to say right so which of these are esports you know which are games and which are esports because i deliberately put just games in um to get them to start to think through that process, you know, and set them loads of little tasks. So by the time I started what I was going to teach on day one, three weeks later, their mindset was thinking about esports and not about gaming. Um, so, yeah, so I, so, so I kind of like write that series. And in doing that and through the, the kind of the, the guest speaking and um, the stuff that we do at QMC, we now have all these colleges who are looking to do stuff and, and, and are setting it up and they're just looking for help, looking for advice and kind of in terms of consultancy, that's, um, you know, that's the majority of what I do is to, to try and help education institutions in their teaching and the creation of their facilities. Um, but you also get some other really completely different things, um, you know, just that are, you know, bringing products to market, new products to market and, and things like that. And projects abroad and projects, you know, far away that you wouldn't have imagined, but you just kind of, things just start to snowball a little bit. Um, you know, so, so I, I, I keep myself busy with the consultant side of stuff and I really enjoy it. You know, it's a great balance. It's a really nice work balance to kind of be at college for four days, home for a day, plus the weekend, plus the holidays where I can focus on the other stuff. Yeah. I think, um, you know, when we, when we talk about like the other stuff and, and real connections and, you know, not strictly talking about just East, you know, the games, but more talking about the whole perspective of esports. you know, one of the things we have an office in Farnborough, which is a short train ride from you guys, um, and we've invited anybody who wants to come to come and see some of the tech there, some of the stuff that we get to play with, uh, just because it is, it's part of the industry, even though we may not be targeting specifically esports applications, all of the tech there is being used and wants to be used. So from an educational perspective, it allows Nick to, you know, bring students over that want to maybe go into AV or see something a little different, uh, but from an entire broad perspective, allow them to, you know, get hands on and, <clears throat> excuse me, hands on and, and really have the opportunity to just see something that they may not typically see on a regular basis. Um, and, and I those, think that, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, and those, when we talk about the connections and, and, and the, the, the connectivity that the Esports Trade Association kind of like just embraces and enhances. And when you came over, there's, there's two things to what you just said about the, the offices in Farnborough. One, today, I've booked in with Davinda next awesome. for a visit next Friday. So I'm going in the next Friday. But then when we were here, when we had the discussion, things are starting to go, starting to yeah. tick. And then I've worked out 
that I've, I've described the building. I said, did you have an office? And it had this big room with the, the control, it was like a control center. And I'd visited the offices or the, the old offices previously about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Because it's of that interest and you can adapt it to so many different things. Um, and it's those little connections, those little things that happen. You know, the day after I listened to the, uh, um, I think it was about the third or fourth podcast of yours, Megan, I had a message from somebody on LinkedIn who was asking me about psychology. And I, I'm typing my reply saying, I was listening to a really good podcast last night. Um, it might be of interest to you. And then as I'm typing it, I'm thinking, hang on. His name was Michael. I think, it, was it Michael? Excuse me if I've got it wrong. Um, it's gone through and I've stopped my message, checked the podcast, and the person who messaged me was the person I'd been listening to on the podcast the night before. So I said, hang on a minute in the middle, you know, in the middle of the message, like a live, a live feed of thought. Um, you, it was you that was on the podcast talking about the flying pig across the beach. And he's like, yeah, that's me. So he'd asked from it. He was asking me about an education perspective. I've just listened to the podcast, but it also turns out that he had been mentoring one of my second year students who'd set up an esports team. And you're like, it's just a huge this is, web. This is, I love this. I love this weird, strange, yeah, web, like you say, Brandon. And, you know, LinkedIn is just such another incredible community. And um, I was just reading, it's mostly it's the leaders that really want to make a difference. And, and are purposeful, like what's our intention? Like, I love the green room um, here when we do the show, cause that's like the best part of the show. So sometimes I, I just click record because it's so fun to like set the intention and let our friends hear that are listening, you know, what our intention is today. And um, that it's just, it's so cool. Um, it, even, even reading, like when you put, filled out your form, Nick, and you were, you know, what's next? And you're like, I just want to keep it real. And, and let me just say something about keeping it real with you, Nick Turner. What time is it there? I mean, I oh, know that. Yeah. It is 25 to five in the evening. Okay. So it's, it's fairly, so I've, I've finished my day's teaching. The yes. college is relatively quiet. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm locked away in my office doing this. Right. And you and, and then, Brandon, I'll ask you, what time is your education committee meetings? You know, a lot of people are reading Nick in the news again or, you know, Queens Mary's College in the news again. And it's like you're truly passionate and you're coming at all these crazy hours from across the pond to be with us. You know, and Brandon flying in the middle of the night, you know, there's Brandon Brunhammer again. Well, yeah, guess what? He flew overnight and slept next to, uh, um, you know, two people in a middle seat to get to UK to go see Nick in an open house. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying <laughs> what it takes. I read the other day, John Maxwell wrote, oh, you want to be me? Do you want to do what I did to be here? And, and that, my friends, really truly comes from passion commitment and one post it and then two and then yeah. three and then yeah. 300 and then a photo and completing and that brings me to my big question you guys are both serving on our education committee so we'll talk about that and nick my big question is what's next what's on the horizon what do you do <laughs> after you did this um oh that's such a difficult question to answer megan um especially I, to a it's, finisher it's yeah I, I think um ultimately in terms of physical projects and things like that um there's there's a couple of there's a couple of potential big projects that, that I'm working on um I'm working with Volpine Academy on their uh, work experience uh program because it it's non-existent here and we've got all these colleges taking up um all these new courses and they've got all these new esports students um but the, the, they they can't get work experience so we're trying to facilitate a way in which we can do that um which is exciting because it again it's 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 going to be more connections we're going to need to connect people with people in order to make this happen 
Um, and I've, I've got some, some other projects going on abroad, which are exciting. Um, but I think for me, it, it's, if go back to when you first uh, introduced this segment, it's about keeping it real. And it's very easy for not just, and I'm not just talking about me, you know, I, I have to keep it real. You know, I have a family, um, I have a, a, a profoundly autistic 14 year old son that takes quite a lot of management um, and looking after. The industry itself and, and education in esports is kind of, you know, it's it's growing exponentially in every single way. And I think when I say keep it real, that's that is literally what I mean. We can't get carried away and think that, we, that this is just going to be an industry that just keeps on going and there's endless money available because it's if we do that, it's going to fall it's going to crash and burn um so we need to keep it real and keep it in context about what it is and yes it's huge you know all you have to do is look at the comparisons between traditional sports and esports and it's all out there it's all ready happening it's just how we shape and frame that as an industry um so keeping it real is 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 just about you know not getting overly ahead of ourselves and 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 basically burning out before we should do but I think ultimately, you know, for me, it's all about kind of life work balance. I'm addicted to work. My wife will tell you that I'm addicted to work. I like, you know, when I used to work in radio, I had a business, a broadcast business that we were broadcasting seven days a week from six studios. And we were meeting deadlines. We were meeting bulletins every 15 minutes in those studios. Mm. I'm a deadline junkie. Give me something to work to. And I'll stay up all night to make sure that I meet it. And I, I, that's inbuilt in me. Mm. However, as I've grown older and as I've had children, um, I can't do that. And if I do do that, that's going to be at the cost of my family. And, right. you know, I've learned um, through previous employment that that's not OK. Um, you know, and, and I kind of went to a point of, no, I've, I've got I've got it all wrong. Um, and the whole kind of transition into esports um, and then back into education, because I jumped out of education to go into esports to come back in, um, mm -hmm. was a really, it was a perfect kind of synergy of, of opportunity and life understanding at that point, because I knew that I needed to balance my work. And so when I kind of started with the esports stuff, it enabled me to bring that into the, into the equation so that I wasn't sucked into something that just got heavier and heavier and heavier I set my store out from the start this is what I'm going to do this is how I want to do it and it will give me enough money to pay my bills and that's all uh, and look after my family that's all I need um, and anything else is a bonus but I'm not going to go down that route of working seven because I used to work seven days a week with with the broadcast business I'm not going to go there again um, it's not fair on, on everybody else. So, you know, that that being content and happy in life for me is is my driving force. It's not money. Um, I like sharing my passion. I like educating. I like teaching. I like helping others. I like mentoring people. Um, but it's not driven by money. As long as I've got enough to, to, to pay my bills, then I'm all good with that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting, you know, as we kind of look at the future and, and just what what lies ahead, you know, being on the education committee from both of us, uh, definitely evaluating the want and the desire and the need to not only deliver educational aspects from ESTA, but also being able to deliver opportunity. And, you know, we talk about real connections. We talk about our passion and love for education and those kinds of things. But you know, deeper than that is the ability to connect with individuals, have those real connections, but also to deliver opportunity from a, from an uh, internship or a mentorship program and something that we've definitely been working with. And, um, you know, the foundation of it is, is your opportunity to go meet on Friday with Devinder and be able to talk to him and see the opportunity that is there and working with companies such as ABI SPL or um, Encore or a multiple of our other um, large member opportunities to be able to deliver those kinds of programs and, and really bring and involve 
not only students, but individuals within the esports industry to be able to show them what's beyond the game. And I think that mm -hmm. that's really important um, from the education committee. And, uh, you know, one of the, the big drives for Nick, I know with you was that capability. You've got these students who really understand games, as you've said before, but understanding esports is so different. It's a different concept. It's a different, it's such a broad spectrum of different trades that we have the ability to show them. And I think that that's a huge drive for us. Yeah, and I think if you look at um, like traditional sport here in the UK, you know, football is our, our soccer, is our, is our big game. And everybody, when they're young, wants to be a pro player. And it's less than 1% of of people that, that make it to that premier league level um and everybody knows that and everybody understands that and it's exactly the same with esports so how can you design a curriculum or um you know deliver a, a, a worthy education study program if it's just about gaming because you're target you know you're essentially targeting 0.1 percent of everybody who games out of the billions of people that game across the world. So it, it, you're wasting your time. You know, it's, it, yeah. it has to be much more, a, a much wider scope, you know, and, and a lot, all of those things that you just said. And, and, and again, that's another great thing with the um, Esports Trade Association is that I know, you know, I, I've got quite a good network here in the UK, um, but I also know that I could drop you a message on LinkedIn either of you and I, I i've done it with you megan before and said look I, I really need somebody just to like do a quick zoom or record a five minute piece from this section of the industry because i'm struggling to find somebody right now plus the students will love the fact that they're from the states because they see the states as the place where it's all happening um excuse the jazz hands um you know and, and but i know that in doing that i'm even if it's not we can't physically hook something up in the time or whatever. I'm not going to be scorned. I'm not going to be, it's always a friendly, welcoming community. Um, and, you know, I, when I meet new people on the education committee that I've never met by the end of the meeting, I feel like I've known them forever. Um, and it's all kind of like, Hey, hi Nick. Hello. You know, and it's great, you know, and I, but I also get to understand, or, or I still haven't quite got it. I'm getting there your side you know what how it works over there you know in america what the, your collegiate system and you know because we we use it in various things as comparison but it's so mm. different to what we do over here so i'm learning all the time you know and, and i'm a big one for continual learning you know I'd, if i haven't learned anything you know in a day then I've, i haven't had a great day because i'm expecting to learn something and however small that is and and you know trust me that can be really small but all the time you're learning you're 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 gaining knowledge which you can then share and use and and everything else so um yeah i you know the the, the esports trade association for me um is a complete breath of fresh air um and something that i didn't have to think too long about it, it wasn't a uh, uh you know three month decision i think i spoke with you on the Friday, Megan, and I think I'd signed up about a week and a half later, um, you know, and, and I'd recommend it to anybody for, for all the reasons that we're discussing here. And it really, it really takes a village. And it's so exciting that, you know, you, UK, where you are, is not too far. And, you know, here's Brandon, the chairman that wants to stop over and see you and really, um, I, I'm just going to say one, you know, my, 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 some of my parting thoughts are maybe the esports sector might have some bad raps about things like, why are you here state? You know, like you don't seem like you're a, a brand that should be, you know, here at the moment or, or whatnot. Okay. So there's been that like relooking at things. And this is another thing to relook at is getting back to the basics. You know, you didn't say you built a design software to build this plan, uh, this university, and all these things that you did. 
you did it on a wall with post-its. And maybe that's some of the message, you know, from, from post-its to, to the governing body of the UK for content for esports. I mean, really. And it, it, it we can make a difference one person at a time. And for me, my parting words to you guys are, first off, Brandon, thank you for spearheading an incredible committee and donating yeah. your time yeah. and resources from AVI SPL to keep the association thriving so we can do this, you know, and then, and Nick, you know, thank you. And I think even Mark, your, um, was it Mark Henderson? Principal. Yeah, Mark Henderson, yes, yeah. He, he even sent me a note about, um, you joining and the support he has for you. So it's, you know, it's not only your vision, Nick, but communicating your vision and, you know, what we could do next on the committee. Um, I'm really hoping to get your involvement at our conference here in Chicago once a year um, in August on the 22nd. We're having our big show. Visit us at esportsta.org. Tomorrow, we have a free um, um, esports, our very first inaugural symposium. You know, join us for that, which obviously this show will run too late, but it's not too late for you to send a note, um, Nick, to, to hop on there. But we are, we are so grateful. It takes, you know, one person at a time and one company at a time to build a community. And it's not about numbers. It's just really about being there on a spot. Hey, Meg, can you do a quick Zoom to my class? And the answer is, yeah, of course. When? Let me know. Sure. Are you sure you want me? Because <laughs> I have much smarter people around me. Like, <laughs> that might be better, but I am always happy to jump in. So for that, I just... I so graciously thank you um, for being a member and being a, being a support and um, all the work you've done in our industry. Did you guys have some parting words? Uh, yeah, I'd, if, if I can jump in here, Brandon, because I would like to say, Megan, th the actual selling point for me. So I was already sold on the idea from listening to, to the podcast. Um, I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the organization. So I scheduled the, the chat with you and I asked you and I remember asking you at the time, you tell me why I should join the Esports Trade Association. And your answer was the reason that I joined because you said, I don't have to, no, I don't need to try to sell what this is. If you want to join, you will be more than welcome to join. It's not for me to tell you why to join. You'll just know if you want to join. And it was that non sales pitch that you, most people at that point would have started listing off we do conferences we've got this we can do this we've got that we and you didn't megan you just said i'm not here to sell it i'm here to talk and i got off the phone and i'm thinking yeah okay that's these are the sorts of people that i want to talk to because i it was just a conversation there was no no pr pretense there was no um hidden agenda it was we're just a community we're just a network and we all want to be here and we'd love to have you I was like okay I'm in so you know thanks to you Megan for uh you know for, for doing the worst but best sales pitch uh I've ever had <laughs> yeah and I would I would just say you know from my final thoughts from the perspective of just keeping the conversation real um you know the the thing I love about the esports trade association is it's not sales pitches. The reality of it is, is it's a community of people that want to be invested with the community of people. And yeah, we make connections. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's in it to, to generate those conversations, to be able to mobilize and move their, their business forward as well. I get that. But the reality of it is, is Nick, if you asked me, Hey, I need some serious help with this, I'd be more than happy to reach out. And just the opportunity to be able to go and invest time with you being there and just being able to be involved with what you have going there and be able to speak to it is, is awesome in itself. Um, and I think that as we continue to grow in that education realm, and as we start to understand what that looks like, you know, the, the conversation is never going to end between you and I. I think it's only going to generate more conversation and grow that network uh, across platforms that maybe we not we may not have been able to individually reach. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that that's only going to continue to grow. You know, I'll be making more and more trips over to the UK as well. And as those happen, would love the opportunity to be able to show your students some new things. You know, if we want to go to the Samsung um, Experience Center down there in, in uh, I believe it's King's Landing or somewhere over in that central London area, um, you know, having those abilities and being able to set up things like that would love the opportunity to show your students some different applications within the esports industry. And um, I could say that we bring this show on the road. Yep. <laughs> Brandon and I actually do. So I would be happy to join you both. Yeah. Um, be that a good time. Is, <laughs> be it would great. be a good time. And that is our episode. Thank you, friends, for joining us for the Esports Connected podcast. Uh, thank you, Brandon, for co-hosting. Absolutely. As always. And Nick Turner, it's been a pleasure. Keep on. Keep on.